Here I've got a nice problem from the Indonesian Mathematical Olympiad. This is from the year 2008. And our goal is to determine all natural numbers that can be written in the form a plus b over c plus b plus c over a plus a plus c over b where all pairwise GCDs are 1. So in other words, a and c do not share any prime factors. Same with a and b and b and c. Okay, so let's get to it. The first thing that I want to do is maybe smash this whole thing together by finding a common denominator. Notice my common denominator will be a times b times c. So that'll give me something like this. I'll have a times b times a plus b. So that'll be from this term right here. I need to include the denominators a and b. And then I'll have b times c, b plus c, and then a times c. Uh, times a plus c. And then this is going to be all over a times b times c equals some natural number n. But instead of putting this all over a times b times c, I'll just multiply that a times b times c to the other side of the equation. So I have this is n times a times b times c, where now we're working with an equation that's totally within the rational or within the natural numbers. Okay, so now from here, I want to play a bit of a game. And the game that I'll play is to solve for this middle term in terms of the first term and the last term and then that thing over there. Okay, so that's going to give me something like this. B times C times B plus C equals A times a bunch of stuff. So from this term, I have N B C. And then from this term right here, I have B and then A plus B. And then from this term right here, I have C and then A plus C. Although that doesn't really matter so much. The really important thing here is I have BC times B plus C is a multiple of A. So I'll just write that as this box times A, where that box is being filled in with all of that stuff right there. All that matters is that it's a multiple of A. Okay, now we're going to use this fact down here that all of these pairwise GCDs are 1. So since all of these pairwise GCDs are 1, that means the multiple of A component must come from the B plus C. It can't come from this B times C term. So putting that together, we see that B plus C is a multiple of A. And I'm going to say that it's equal to M times A. Okay, so let's maybe hang on that for just a second. Now let's take this expression for B plus C, put it into our original equation, and notice that that gives us a multiple of A in all of these terms, which we can cancel out. So let's see, plugging that up here, most everything will stay the same. So I'll have AB times A plus B, that's this term. And then here I'll have M times A times B times C. That's because we can replace this B plus C with M times A. And then I have A times C times A plus C. And this is all equal to N A B C. But like we pointed out, everything here is a multiple of A, so we can cancel it. So I'll cancel this multiple of A, this multiple of A, this multiple of A, and this multiple of A. And we do that just by dividing the entire thing by A. Okay, nice. So now we're going to play a similar game to what we did before, except we'll solve for B times A plus B in terms of everything else. So here I'll have B times A plus B equals, moving all of this over, let's, let's look at it carefully and notice everything will be a multiple of C. So I won't write it out super carefully, but what we'll see is that all of this is something times C. Okay, so that's good to know. But again, because we've got pairwise relative primeness over here, we know that B is not a multiple of C, so that means A plus B must be a multiple of C. So in other words, we can write A plus B as, let's say, L times C. So there we've got another relationship right there. 
But now, plugging that back in up here, we can do some more simplification. So that'll give us L times B times C for this term, plus M times B times C for this term, and then plus C times A plus C equals NBC. Now we can cancel some terms again. So let's notice that everything is a multiple of C in this entire equation. So we can cancel out a C here, a C here, and a C here, and a C here. Okay, so that's good. But then we can solve for A plus C. And what we'll end up seeing is that A plus C is a multiple of B. Moving everything over, we see that we have a multiple of B. So that maybe, let's say that that is equal to K times B, like that. Okay, so now we've got all of those relationships. Let's maybe bring those to the top and then we'll move on to the next step. So far, we're in a good place. We've shown that B plus C is a multiple of A, A plus C is a multiple of B, and finally, A plus B is a multiple of C. Now, let's go back over to our expression here and notice that it's symmetric with any sort of switch of A, B, and C. So what that means is we only need to consider this for a certain ordering of A, B, and C. So, in other words, without loss of generality, we might as well assume that C is the smallest, B is the next smallest, and A is the largest. So we have C is bigger than or equal to 1, B is bigger than or equal to C, and A is bigger than or equal to B. Now, if we were really just looking for the numbers A, B, and C, we would have to take um, permutations of our, of our final solution. But here we're not looking for the numbers A, B, and C. We're looking for all possible outputs. So if we find all possible outputs with this ordering, we're good to go, again, because of the symmetry of our variables over here. Let's maybe like duplicate this inequality into two parts that we will add together. So those two parts will be 1 is less than or equal to B, which is less than or equal to A. So that's just leaving off the C part. And the other one is 1 is less than or equal to C, which is less than or equal to A. So again, that's just leaving off the B part. Now we can smash these together, giving us 2 is less than or equal to B plus C, which is less than or equal to 2A. But we know that B plus C is a multiple of A. So that means we can take this B plus C and rewrite it with M times A. But let's look at this. M times A is a multiple of A, which is less than or equal to 2 times A. That means that M times A is either A or 2 times A. So M is either 1 or 2. So let's break that down into our two cases. So case number 1 will be B plus C equals A. In other words, the M equals 1 case. And then maybe case 2 will be the other one when B plus C is equal to 2A. So that would be the M equals 2 case. And now let's see where we can go from there. So let's focus on this first case first. So if B plus C is equal to A, so let's maybe add a C to both sides of this equation to build an A plus C and see what we have. So that'll give us B plus 2C is equal to A plus C, which is in turn equal to L times B. Okay. But notice that tells us that 2 times C is a multiple of B. We can get that by moving the B over. I'll write that as X times B. Okay, so that's going to be pretty important. Now let's do the same kind of thing, but over here. So we'll add B to both sides of this equation. So let's maybe sketch that out. Multi add it. Adding b to both sides of the equation here will give us 2b plus c is the same thing as a plus b, which is the same thing as k times c. But now we can do the same kind of thing that we did above. We can move this c over and we'll see that 2b is equal to y times c. It's a multiple of c. 
Okay, so let's maybe bring those up to this spot right here, and then we'll work towards the end. So we have 2c is equal to x times b, and we have 2b is equal to y times c. So that's kind of a good intermediate thing that follows from this b plus c equals a. Okay, so now let's work off of these. So let's take this first one and multiply it by y and then switch the order. So that'll give us x times y times b is equal to 2 times y times c. Then we'll take the second equation and multiply it by 2. But notice the right-hand side turns into this exactly. And the left-hand side will be 4 times b. But now we can cancel the b's from both sides and notice that we've got x times y is equal to 4. But that in turn gives us two cases. We have a case when x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 1. And we have another case when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2. You'll see that the case when x is equal to 1 and y equals 4 is essentially the same as this one right here. Okay, so let's see what each of these give us. So if x is equal to 4, then we have 2 times c is equal to 4 times b, which means we have c equals 2b. So that comes from this equation. But now the GCD of these two numbers has to be 1, b and c that is, which means here we have b equals 1, otherwise the GCD would not be 1. And if b is 1, then that means c is equal to 2. Okay, but b is 1 and c is 2, and then a is b plus c, so that means a is equal to 3. Okay, so that's one like solution set which maybe we'll hold on for the next board. And then let's work down this second solution. So x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2. So plugging that up here, we have 2c is equal to 2b. But if 2c is equal to 2b, that means b equals c. But then since their GCD is 1, that means b equals c equals 1. And But if b equals c equals 1, then a equals 2. So here we have a is equal to 2. Great, and then that's another solution set. Now we can move on to this next one. But now we can play the same sort of game with this case over here. So let's build a B plus C into this. So let's add 2C to both sides of this. So that'll give us B plus 3C equals 2 times A plus C, which equals, let's see, 2 times L times B. So something that looks like that, that gives us 3 times c is equal to a multiple of b. So I'll call that maybe z times b. And then from there we can play the same sort of game with this equation, leaving us with 3b equals w times c. And then with a reduction, just like we see over here, we'll end up with actually only one possibility. And that'll be the case when B equals C equals one. But if B and C is one and B plus C equals two A, then that means that A equals one as well. Okay, so that gives us our third possibility. So let's bring these three possibilities up and see which natural numbers we get out of those possibilities. On the last board, we built the following three possibilities. There was a bit of a mix-up with this one, where B and C were switched, but I've switched them back. Okay, so now let's take these three possibilities and see what actual natural numbers we get here. So for A is equal to 3, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to 1, that turns into, let's see, 3 plus 2 over 1. That's this, this pit portion of the expression. And then we'll have 2 plus 1 over 3. That's this portion. And then plus 3 plus 1 over 2. But let's see, that's going to give us 5 plus 1 plus uh, 2. Okay, so that's equal to 8. So that's our first possibility. Now let's move on to the second. So we'll have 2 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 2 plus 1 over 1. Okay, so let's see what we get for that. That's going to be 3 plus 1 plus 3. That will be equal to 7.
Now let's finally look at this last one. So that's just going to be 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 1. So let's see, that'll be 2 plus 2 plus 2, which equals 6. So the only three possible natural numbers that can be written in this form are 6, 7, and 8. And that's a good place to stop.